Hello, it's me again. Um, so today we're going to discuss about how to do multi-objective optimization. So I'm now with a few slides with me um, to, to make it easy for me to, to explain the concept of this uh, multi-objective uh, multi -objective optimization. So in daily life, for you, for example, yeah, if you would like to go from this Bukit Bintang, this, this place to Petronas Twin Tower, for example, for KLCC, so we can we can ask Google to to find the route for us, and it will typically give like at least two at least two routes. So number one is then typically they will then give us the the minimum the, the the shortest duration the route with the shortest durations, and then the other one is then maybe um, another route with with um, 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 the shortest distance. Uh, maybe uh, another one is then the um, like for example, um, and then uh, some other um, uh, uh, options. Yeah. So in this case, they give us like three. So uh, this is then um, uh, coincidentally, this shortest durations is also the shortest distance. So you can, as you can see, seven minutes and then two point four, two point five kilometers. Um, so um, before we go to that, so I need to explain something about this Pareto of fronts. So for example, if we have like a two functions, or in this case, two objective functions, where both we would like to minimize, yeah, both we would like to minimize. But um, as in this case, um, for example, this f2, this is then one solutions. So we have these functions as a functions of, of x1, x2, x3, and so on and so forth. And then the, <clears throat> for a same, uh, for, for uh, one set of x variables, yeah, uh, it gives us this solution, for example. And then it gives this um, f2 is then this is the corresponding value of the second objective. And this then the corresponding value of the first objective. So in this case, we have a minimum value of f1, but quite a maximum value of f2. Uh, in this case, the Pareto uh, mentioned that um, uh, what like he, this is then the, the Pareto front, like you see. Um, what it means is that um, for all of these points in the Pareto front, they are the uh, non-dominated solutions. What it means is that um, we cannot even go to a lower objective functions of F2. For example, if we if we look at the, uh, from, from this point, <coughs> we cannot go lower to F2 unless we go worse on F1. Yeah. So um, so uh, we cannot have this point go to that point um, without without worsening the F1. So in this case if, as well, if we would like to go further, so I would like to, for example, I, I see that F2 is more important than F1. So I can go to um, a little bit lower and lower F2, but then the, uh, consequently the objective functions one or F1, it goes higher and higher. We cannot, we cannot get, we cannot get um, the best of both. Yeah, like in this case, if we have a solution somewhere here, that means it's the best of both, both minimum of both F1 and F2. But in this case, this becomes depending on the systems that we are going to optimize, this becomes the the Pareto front, and um, uh, the shape of that, um, yeah depends highly on the system that we are going to uh, evaluate. Um, the, behind behind this part of front is then there are also many solutions that fits to F1 and F2, but these, these solutions, they are dominated solutions. In a way, uh, what it means is that um, if we have, for example, we have this as a solution. So in this, from this point, we know that we can go lower uh, um, in F1. We can minimize F1 until this line. Or we could also minimize F2 until this line. Yeah? But we could also minimize both F1 and F2 uh, until this line. So this solution is dominated by one, two, and three points, at least. at least. Okay. Uh, so this is what it means by Pareto front. <clears throat> now, um, in process simulations, it's not that easy. Yeah? In some of the process simulations, there is no options maybe to do multi-objective optimization, but nonetheless, Typically, we have like a simple system, yeah, so you can find this uh, system in, in any textbook. So it is more like a, a, a natural gas with water, where the water is going to be absorbed by the glycol so that we uh, meet a certain dew point requirement over here. So the goal of this system is that um, uh, we have the, the water absorbed by the glycol and then this glycol, the rich glycol is then going to be heated and then the, the water is then being released here and then there as well. And then the pure glycol, I mean to well, pure glycol will then be stripped by this gas, this stripping gas. So in the end, we'll have a the purest form of glycol over here, which is then um, uh, heat it, uh, cool it down, and then pump it back to the uh, absorption column. So the goal is then um, um, to to mean number one is then to minimize the dew points of the gas, 
which is then the target. And then the other one is then the more the more duty that we have over here, the the, the purer the um, the the glycol. So if the glycol is then purer, we will get we will, we will be able to get more water from the system. Yeah. So uh, the second one is then um, to minimize the reboiler duty. Can we minimize the reboiler duty while at the same time we also minimize the the dew point? So we have two objective functions over here. So how we do that? Yeah. How we do that in in, in typical process simulation? We we start for example uh, we have uh, objective function one and objective function two for example I took it from from this Udemy class I think you should follow this as well mastering energy and power system optimization in games it's a nice uh, it's a nice course so I took it from from his slides so um, the way he he does it is for example yeah uh, assume that this is then the minimum dew point this is then the re this is the dew point this is then a reboiler um, uh, we fix the dew point at a certain at certain value. For example, this is then the minus something. Um, I should say this is then reboiler duty. This is then dew point. So to make it consistent with my next slide, um, so we fix the the dew point at a certain value, and from uh, we use that as a constraint. For example, if I want to fix like dew point to be minus forty, for example, and then I calculate then I ask the simulation to calculate for me how much is then the minimum energy required to achieve that minus 40. So that becomes the the, the, the one point in the Pareto front. And then I vary that again. Um, if it's minus 30, how much is that minus 30, for example, how much is then the minimum uh, uh, reboil duty? And then minus uh, 20, how much is then the minimum uh, reboil duty? And so on and so forth. In, in such a way that in the end, I can make, I can make this kind of Pareto uh, front by minimizing both um, optima, uh, objective functions. Yeah? But in this in this particular case, to not to confuse you, in this particular example, the slides which I um, just copy paste simply, um, uh, this functions is to be maximized. So we have this kind of stuff. So it may maximize objective function two as well as maximizing objective function one. But in our case, it is minimizing both energy and then dew point. <clears throat> so this is what I, I mentioned. So we we use this the dew point. Uh, we make it like a constraint, yeah. So um, uh, I have I use it at like an upper limit, so it cannot go higher than minus twenty. And then we have to minimize the reboiler duty, minimize the reboiler duty, while the dew point cannot go to minus twenty. So to make this simpler, of this simple case, the two independent variables that I use, uh, the first one is then the reboiler temperature, and the second one is then the the stripping gas, as you can see, the stripping the stripping gas. So so um, um, and then um, yeah, and then the, I asked this um, in, in this case it's a symmetry. So I asked this symmetry to find for me what is then the corresponding x to x variables, the reboiler temperature as well as the the gas volume, in such a way that at minus twenty degrees C uh, I minimize the um, the the reboiler duty. So um, it gives me this. So um, uh, uh, mathematically speaking, it will then it will then um, uh, if it this can because this is then like an upper limit yeah we cannot go above this but we can go lower but if we go lower like in this case the current value is then minus twenty one uh, if it goes lower uh, the the objective uh, the the calculated probability is higher than the than the minimum one yeah so this is then the associated probability for this um, uh, dew point but then if the the calculated dew point of is minus twenty and this is then going to be the associated probability so this is then how uh, we set up uh, the multi-objective optimization. So this is the point number one, and then number two, you can vary uh, um, minus 30, minus 40, and so on and so forth. So this is what I did. So minus 10, it was minus 20. So that is then the the, the, uh, the, the reboiler duty. This is then the minus 10 of the dew point. This is then the reboiler duty, uh, minus 30. That is then uh, the associated reboiler duty. So with these three points, this becomes the associated um, multi-objective optimization solutions. So it can go the duty for a for a certain dew points. The duty can go higher, but it cannot go lower. Yeah, simply because of the process constraints that we have, <coughs> which includes the equipment or the thermodynamic uh, constraints that we have. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be the 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 um, uh, the, um, 
the minimum energy that we um, uh, can obtain uh, for a certain uh, dew point requirement. Yeah. So from this in from this graph, we could then also simulate the current positions of our system. For example, we are now running at minus 20 degrees C of dew points, but then the reliability is three point something. So that means we have this 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 is then the, the space for improvement, yeah, which we can then use this process simulations to 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 ask us what is then the correct route to to meet this minimum dew point uh, to meet this minimum reliability. So um, <clears throat> there's also another trick that I found as well. So we could also do because in in some cases, yeah, it may not find it because this is an optimization. So because it's the more complicated the case is, uh, the more difficult it will then um, uh, to find the optimum uh, value. So uh, as a trick, as a trick, yeah, um, uh, we could use the sensitivity analysis. So we can then vary um, uh, 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 the um, uh, the reboiler temperature as one of the variables. And then, the, and then we can then see uh, how much is then the water dew point calculated. Yeah. So it, we have uh, for each of these regular temperature, there is uh, uh, some variations as well in the um, uh, gas uh, flow rate. So there are many gas flow. So the lower, the higher the gas flow rate, um, the lower the dew point in this case. Yeah. So this is then the gas flow rate which is higher, the highest, and is then the, the lowest gas flow rate that I allow during the sensitivity analysis. So we could see this, <coughs> and then we could also do another trick here, yeah? another trick. So for example, if I would like to see the minus 20 degrees C dew point, it will be somewhere here, and it touched there, and it also be somewhere there, yeah? so within these two points. So we can also see uh, if we want to minimize the the the, uh, the reboiler duty, we could see. So at this point, what is then the associated reboiler duty, and what is then the associated reboiler duty, and then we can then uh, make an average out of these two. Um, and this is the associated reboiler duty for a different reboiler temperature. As we can see, uh, it um, it goes up consistently, and then the, all uh, gas flow rate is there, all <coughs> one behind the other. <coughs> yeah, so we don't see any effect on the gas flow rate um, with respect to the uh, reboiler duty. <coughs> So using this, uh, we could also make um, then um, uh, plot the water dew point and the reboil duty, as it was the case over here. But we would do it this way. Yeah, we have the because it's all sensitivity analysis. Yeah, there are many. So in this case, we can see. Yeah, uh, this is the the Pareto front. Yeah, the Pareto front. So at this point, that 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 point. That point. So in a way, we could use this as an approximation of the um, uh, Pareto front, or we could use this number as initial points for the optimizations, which I did, which I did, which I will show you later. On. So um, um, and then the, these are all these are those dots, all of these dots behind the, the Pareto front, they are all the uh, the dominated solutions. Um, so if I if I then <coughs> combine these um, the solutions from from that um, uh, optimizations and then sensitivity analysis, I get this. So this is then the minimum dew point. Uh, sorry, the minimum reboiler duty for minus thirty degrees C. So this value is very close to the uh, to the, the these the two values here yeah, uh, from the sensitivity analysis. So it uh, the, the same way with the other. Too. So it this becomes like a um, yeah, proof that we can approximate this uh, multi-objective optimization uh, via sensitivity analysis, provided that um, we have, I mean, we have the uh, the correct operating range here yeah, uh, uh, for both for the optimization and then for the sensitivity analysis. Um, but there's also another problem, yeah, another caveat from that is that um, the if you can see um, for complicated stuff. Um, uh, the solutions cannot be obtained because it simply uh, the, the recycles uh, and then says like iterate iterations uh, that the, the 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 solutions cannot be solved. For example, in this case, see uh, with these um, two variables, uh, it cannot be solved. So if it cannot be solved, that means the solver cannot go forward. So um, and then it will then we we cannot then get the optimum solutions. Um, so. Uh, to overcome this difficulty, we typically um, do the sensitivity analysis and then use that sensitivity analysis data or the case study data so that we can make like aggregations um, like or what people call now like machine learning. So we do the machine learning, for example, 
so it is then the, um, the slides that I've uh, been using so far. So uh, from this model, from this model, this is a, like a model, and then we generate data, and then we make the machine learning regressions for that data. And then um, from that machine learning, we use that machine learning because that machine learning is, is pure mathematics, especially if you use like a neural network. And then we can then do optimize that uh, neural network to obtain the, the results. So this is what we had, yeah. Um, um, so it's more like a, like a 3D now uh, in one of uh, our previous work. Um, so these are then the Pareto uh, front, uh, and then this is also the Pareto front. Uh, so any of these solutions are feasible solutions and optimum solutions um, uh, in terms of um, the first, second, and then third variable. Yeah, in this in this in this particular case, I showed you the, the third variable. But uh, the point being is that these dots they are uh, obtained by optimizing the machine learning instead of the process simulations because process simulations has this um, has has a high probability of not getting solved because the, the simply because the process is quite complicated mathematically so uh, in that sense um, having the machine learnings build from a case studies or from sensitivity analysis it helps a lot in finding the optimum value um, uh, especially if you want like to do the multi-objective optimization. So until here, um, I think um, um, I'm done. Um, so see you next time.